So now we know the basic definitions of vertical and horizontal asymptotes. All right, now we're going to talk about actually how to find them algebraically in calculus. All right, so we're going to look at the kind of two base cases that we'll have to worry about and see what they look like. So one thing you'll notice for a lot of these asymptote ones is they're the one-sided limits. Because a lot of asymptotes kind of have this jump when you have asymptotes on the two sides. All right, for this one, we'll just think about what the graph looks like. So 1 over x, if we were to graph this, we're going to graph that looks like this. So from this picture, you can probably guess that the limit at from 0 on the left, or we're in this region. Well, in this region, all these y values are going down forever, so our answer is going to be negative infinity. And then from the right, all right, we're on just on the right side of 0. If we think about all the y values there, they're going upward forever, and we get positive infinity. All right, so these are our kind of base cases with 1 over x. On the left, you're going to get negative infinity, and the reason for that is you're dividing by really small negative numbers, like negative 0 0.01, all right, which is going to make the answer negative. On the right, you're dealing with really small positive numbers, which is going to make the answer positive. So I like to think about kind of is that whole thing going to be positive or negative, and that'll tell you if it's negative infinity or positive infinity. All right, for 1 over x minus 2 squared, first of all, recognize that now on the bottom, I don't just have an x, I have an x minus 2. And I can't divide by 0, so I don't want the bottom to be 0, which happens when x is 2. So that's why this question is asking me what happens at 2 for this function. And again, we'll look at what the graph would look like. So if we look at this graph, x equals 2 is going to be our asymptote. And the graph looks something like this. As you can see, this is different from the graph um, on the last page, because from the left and the right, both things are going up. They're both going to positive infinity. And the thing that's causing that is the square. And more importantly, not just the fact that it's a square, but any even power. So this could also be x minus 4 to the fourth. All right, Any even power, they're going to go in the same direction like this. It's just kind of one thing to remember. And the odd power, so if it was x minus 2 by itself, or x minus 2 cubed, right, it'll be like the last slide. All right, they'll go in opposite directions. But any even power, 2, 4, you could have 6, any even power, they're going to go in the same direction. All right, so that's kind of how I'm going to help you once you get down to the point. All right, once you realize it's an asymptote, you basically have a 50 50 shot. It's either positive or negative infinity. And then you kind of just have to reason through which one should it be. Should it be positive or negative? All right, here's one thing you have to consider. All right, for this one, zero, x over x, I right, want to plug in 0. If you try to plug in 0, you get 0 over 0. And the whole dividing by 0 thing is what causes these asymptotes to happen. All right, but if we were to graph this function, it looks like this. And there's no asymptote there. So the kind of thing to remember is it's not just the fact that you're dividing by 0. It's the fact that you can't simplify your fraction at all. So x over x, we know, is equal to 1, because we can just cancel these x's out. And if this is equal to 1, the limit's just going to be 1, right, which is basically just filling in that dot there. All right, so if you get 0 over 0, when you plug something in, generally that's not going to be an asymptote because that means something will cancel and then you'll just get a hole. All right, so that's written in this strategy. All right, so if you're trying to find uh, the limits of a rational, here are the kind of three steps you should go. First is try to plug in a number. If you plug in a number into a rational and it works and nothing's weird, you don't divide by zero, then you're just done. You get some answer and you're done. If you plug in, you get zero over zero. This is kind of the clue that something can probably cancel out in your fraction. All right, so like the last one, we got 0 over 0. The x is canceled out, and then we could plug in our value. So if you get 0 over 0, that's what we want to try to simplify, and then hopefully you can plug in. If you get anything else over 0, like 1 over 0 or 10 over 0, all right, that's going to give you an asymptote, because nothing's going to cancel out in that case, and you need to figure out, is it going to be positive infinity or negative infinity? All right, so there's three different things that can happen all depending on what happens when you plug in your value. If it works, you're done. Zero over zero, simplify. Number over zero, I try to figure out if it's going to be positive or negative infinity. 
All right, so if we look at this example, I want to try to plug in 3. On the top, if I try to plug in 3, uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. Bottom, we get 9 minus 6 minus 3, which is 0. So I get a number over 0, which means I'm going to have an asymptote. And now I just need to figure out which direction is it going. Is it going to positive infinity or negative infinity? All right, well, one thing I can do, I can take this fraction and factor the bottom. So I get x minus 3 times x plus 1. All right, and the x plus 1s are going to cancel. So something still cancels in this place, but it still doesn't fix the fact that I'm trying to plug in 3 and I get 0 on the bottom. I've been having this simplified fraction is going to help me figure out what's happening. So if I'm just on the left of 3, I'm going to be plugging in something like, oh, this should be a minus sign. sign. Right, but I'm still trying to plug in 3, and x minus 3 is 0. So it's still going to give me an asymptote, even though something simplified. If I'm just on the left of 3, I'm going to be plugging in something like 2.9. Right, 2.9 is just on the left of 3, just less than 3. So on the bottom, I'm going to have 2.9 minus 3, which is negative 0.1. All right, so when I plug in a number just on the left of 3, I get a negative number, and it helps me know that this answer is going to be negative infinity. All right, so just kind of reasoning through with your negative numbers is going to be enough to help you figure out if you're going to get negative infinity or positive infinity.